Hello and welcome to another tutorial offering support to Open University students studying the module TM111 Introduction to Computing and Information Technology and today we're going to give you an introduction to spreadsheets and in particular to Google Sheets. Now to me spreadsheets are an incredibly powerful tool. They're very good for managing accounts whether they're personal accounts, household accounts, company accounts. I find them very useful for financial planning. So if you're planning that holiday abroad, you can put all your costs and where your money is going to be spent and plan it well ahead, so no surprises. Data in a table is very attractive and very exciting, but once you chart it, once you turn that data into a picture, then it starts to come alive. You can see things, you can see trends, it's more visual, it's much more exciting. But one of the big powers of spreadsheets is that you can create what we call flat file databases. I have several. I keep all my books, my DVDs and my contacts in several. Once you've got data in a database, you can manipulate it. For instance, in my books database, I can actually select all of my books that are associated with a genre science fiction. To access Google Sheets, you'll need a Google Apps for Education account. Once you've got that, go to the page and down the bottom you'll see a little icon called Drive. This gives you access to Google Drive where you can store all of your various documents. Once you click on that, you'll be presented with your drive area and at the top is a little big, a big blue button called New. So let's click on that and that will allow me to create new documents. And I can create several types of documents in Google. Uh, basically, I've got, I've got a document account like a word processing one, spreadsheets, which we're going to be looking at in a moment, and also slides like PowerPoint. So Google offers all of these integrated tools, just like the other leading vendors. Click on Google Sheets and the little arrow there, and that allows me to create a blank spreadsheet. But if I have a template set up, then I can always re, uh, reuse that in other spreadsheets by selecting the next icon. But I'm just going to start off with a blank spreadsheet and I'll be presented with something looking like this. Top left hand corner will say untitled spreadsheet. So the first thing you need to do is to actually give your spreadsheet a name. This will be the also the file name that you'll be able to identify your spreadsheet in the drive area a bit later on. When we see a spreadsheet, we see columns and we see rows and in, where they intersect, we have things called cells. And you can see my blue cursor there is sitting on cell A1. We reference cells by their column uh, letter and their row number. But looking above, you see that we have the familiar sort of menu bar and ribbon that we see in other word processing and spreadsheet programs. The ribbon bar will allow me to format my text. I can make it bigger or smaller, fonts, bold it, italicize it in the usual sort of way. But there'll be a lot more functionality in here that you see in other packages because this is a spreadsheet program. So it's going to, you're going to see little icons which will allow me to do charting and also some calculations. So let's have a look at a typical spreadsheet. Here's one I've prepared earlier. And you can see that it's got a name at the top. I've called it TM111 TMA scores. And you see it's a spreadsheet. And if I click on a cell, like the first one here, you can see it's called surname. And you see also the value of that cell is shown in this editing bar at the top here. So, you know, I can alter it and put in new values and just press return and those values will go into my cell. So this is my header row. This is the title of all of my data columns and it reflects what's below. So this is the surname of some students. This is their first names and this is their scores for TMA 1, 2 and 3. If I select a row, by just simply clicking on the number at the front there. I can change it, I can do various things to it. So for instance, I can take the bolding off if I want to. I like to see bolding on headings, so I've made, I've, I'll keep my bolding on. But I can change the size of my typeface as well. Here's the, it's currently set to 11. 10 I find is a bit too small and not uh, distinctive enough. So I like 11 just to make it a bit bigger than the text below. But this is a flat file database. And I'm going to show you the power of what we can do with the flat file database by just doing some simple manipulation of this data. First of all, we have these drop down icons along the top here. They're all very similar to what you'll see in other packages. So here under edit, you see I've got cut and paste and I can cut out a row and paste it in somewhere else. 
For insert, for instance, I, if I'm a bit of data missing, I can insert a row either above or below where the cursor is, or I can insert a column if I'm a column missing as well. Format, I can re, re lay out my data numbers here and show, show them in different uh, formats. For instance, it might be accounts, therefore I want to show them in currency values. Font size is also reflected in here as well as bold and everything which is on the ribbon bar. Data we're going to be looking at in a moment because uh, under data this is where we can actually do some manipulation of the data in the in the database. So let's see what we can do. Let me select my chunk of data here and what I want to do is to alphabetize it. You see in the surname column all of my students are higgledy-piggledy and the names, their surnames are all over the place. So let's just select data and I want to sort this range of data. So I'll click, I'll click on there. Now, I always give my data a header row. That means the, the header row reflects the data what's below. And if I click yes here, then I see it picks up that it knows about the word surname. And I want to sort on that surname and I want to alphabetize A to Z. So that button's already checked. So if I click sort, this data is now sorted and I can see I've got my C's before my D's and my F's and the W's. But this is a database and I can do uh, manipulation on this database. At the top here, there's an option more. And if you click on it, you'll see some more uh, options to my ribbon bar. On the end here, it's a very important one. It's where all my various functions that, I'm, that I might want to use is available to me. And here's my column of TMA scores and I might want to work out what is the average TMA score for TMA1 for all of my students. So here I click on my function icon and I see the word average is already at the top of the list. Uh, these are the more popular ones at the top of the list but notice at the bottom it says more functions and in there there's a lot and I do mean a lot of functions which will help you to manipulate data. So if I click on average it puts in the little formula for me down the bottom here but I can always just select the rows above and that will automatically fill in the missing values. So here I want the average. Notice the equal sign that says it's a function, it's going to evaluate something. So this cell will equal the average of items in C2, that's my first set of data, all the way through to C7. So the average of my scores for my students for TMA01 was 75. But the power of this spreadsheet tool is this copy and pasting because I want the I want the average for all of those TMAs. So if I just copy it, I can paste it in different cells and that will automatically give me the average of the data above. So that's the average for all my students. But of course, I might want the average across the TMA scores for a particular student. So again, I'll just click there. I want the average. And again, I just click and drag across the cells and that will give me the average score for that student. But again, if I just copy and paste it in, I can get the average score for the TMAs for each student just by cutting and pasting. Now, I've got some ugly numbers here. I don't like ugly numbers. They don't, don't mean much, these very, very deep decimal places. So I like to round my numbers. And to do that, I'll just select that table of numbers and basically go up to format, number, and I see here I've got a format for numbers to two decimal places. Well, that's good enough for me. I'm happy with that. But down the bottom, it does say more format. So if I didn't want it to two decimal places, if I want it to more or less, I can change it. But I'm going to just have it to two decimal places. And you see my data is now slightly presented differently to two decimal places. So... This is one of the powers of the spreadsheet program. It's incredibly important. Very, very powerful indeed. Now I'm just going to select that little bit of data there because I want to finish on showing you how we can visualize our data. So by just selecting that chunk of data, I haven't selected the averages, I can go to insert and down the bottom here it says a chart. And when I insert a chart, it will nicely determine what's the best sort of chart for me. And here it's opted for a nice little chart called a bar chart. Uh, it's got the, my, my student names along the top here. That's a bonus. Uh, but it's also got my student names down here in a color coded way. So my students are basically shown is a bar chart and how well they've done on the various TMA scores. So again, you see, we can visualize the data and very often visualizing data 
is more important than watching and looking at a column of numbers and de and, and text. So it's a, it's a very, very nice way of actually presenting your data. Now that chart is now in my spreadsheet and it's, uh, it's in there forever and I can remove it or pop it into somewhere else. But basically the idea of these charts is that these can now be cut out and actually put, put, put in a, um, a word processing doc document or your script or whatever you might have to submit. So from the simple set of data, I can produce a very, very attractive looking chart, a nice visualization of my data. Well, we've come to the end of the tutorial on the start of Google Sheets. I didn't say anything about saving that, did I? Because you don't have to. Google Sheets will save as you go, go along. That's all for today on this. Uh, I offer further support for my tutorials on my website, whose URL is given there. Thank you for listening.